thank you for watching this video. Let's talk about some of the uh, details of the piece and then also some details about fundamentals of playing the clarinet. So the piece itself is in 3-2 the meter and the key signature is in D minor, which is one flat, and that is relative to the F major key, which is also one flat. So don't let the 3-2 confuse you. This is like a march in cut time, except there's three half notes instead of two here. If you're confused, I suggest counting it uh, with a quarter note to get the beat for a while. The reason we want to think ultimately though of the half note is to think of the phrasing and feel the phrasing as more connected. So if I were to put my metronome, uh, we're taking it at 52, half note equals 52. If I were to double that to 104, so I'll put that on, and now I count it like this and play it, it will be correct as far as the uh, rhythm goes, but it may distort some of the phrasing a little bit. As opposed to feeling a larger beat, one and two and three. the second bar, uh, we have a dotted quarter note, and again, I suggest if you're having trouble counting and dividing that beat to know where to come in on the low A, then I would suggest counting it in four and be thinking of your eighth notes. So if I, let's just go at a slower tempo so we can hear it. Say if I uh, go maybe around 80 and I put my eighth notes on, one, two, three, four, the second bar will be counted like one and two and three, four, five, six, one. I counted up to six because three, two is the same as six, four in the sense that there are still six quarter notes to the beat. So in fact, let me even slow it down a little bit more. Say we go around to 70, one and two and three and four and five and six. thinking eighth notes, one and two and three. And then if I go back to my slower tempo of 52, but make it the half note, one, two, three. Now let's see if we can divide that in half and then half again. So one and two and three, one e and the two e and the three e. what I'm doing, I'm playing basically eighth notes all throughout the bar to be really precise as to where all of the notes will land, particularly with the dotted quarter note. Um, we can back up a bar to bar number one, the same thing. So, uh, oh, and by the way, number your measures. I numbered them here and I'm using an iPad and I tried to number all my bars so that we can refer to them when I'm talking to you, but also that you can uh, have a reference when you're working with a teacher or just that you know where you are in, in your uh, piece. So uh, at number one, we have a tied half note. So again, we think one, two, three, one and two, and three and one e and a two, okay? Um, the same thing with bar three, if you need to count it in quarter notes for a while, one, two, three, four, five, and one, okay? And then ultimately one and two and three, bar three is one and three, oh, one. Uh, grace note in bar five, uh, we don't need to play this terribly fast. And the same thing in bar six. Let's talk about dynamics because we really can't separate these out from uh, the rhythm and the technical things. This is all really part of the whole character of this piece. So the second bar has a crescendo, the third bar 
has a sforzando, and then in that third bar immediately, piano, crescendo, decrescendo. So let's see if we can make that happen. I'm playing my high D with basically uh, a half hole. So my high D is two, three here, this finger and the E flat key along with the thumb and the register key. And then I also am coming to it from my A. So I'm leaving my first finger on the left hand down just a little bit to allow that D to not pop out. And they call that a half hole. I'm not literally covering this hole halfway. I'm sort of just leaving a little bit of a slice of air to come out through or an opening to come out uh, here just for some air to come out. And that allows that second register or that next register to vent out and come out. So I could go and take it off completely. But if I want to be safe, and I'll probably back my air off a little bit um, and let me try to practice it once with you, for you with a little sforzando. So I'd say overall in this audition and in auditions in general, pull back uh, safety-wise just a little bit. In other words, if you want to really hit that high D with a sforzando, play it maybe 97%, not 200%, just to make sure that you're not going to squeak on it and that it's not going or that it's not going to overblow to another pitch. Um, as soon as we play your high D, the sforzando means to hit it and back off. So now we come down immediately and make sure you do that so that you can shape the rest of the bar. So from bars uh, two into three. And you can kind of treat from the C to the B flat into bar four on the A, uh, that decrescendo coming down from the C is maybe kind of going into the A. It'll sound effective if you let the A decrescendo as well. Um, I would say that try in bar four, bar five, and bar six, we have another decrescendo on each one of those at the ends of the bars. Try again to do that. It may seem confusing. In bar five, he puts a crescendo. Overall, we want these to be a little bit louder and louder. Uh, so a climactic point is bar seven where he has the 16th ones. Um, I would say that think of these in levels, particularly bars four, the last three quarter notes, bar five, the last three quarter notes, and bar six, the last three quarter notes. And by then we're nice and say loud but full forte. Um, I'm taking some little pauses, little breaths in there. Uh, they're not marked in, but uh, if you don't need one, don't take one. And I'm taking one right there after the F sharp, right before my high C to kind of set that up. Um, the rhythm on the 16th notes, again, if my half note is this, divide it into quarter notes, one, two, three, four, one, and two, and three, and four, one, and two, and one. So you can feel what the 16th notes feel like. If you're, if you're not sure, the first way to practice this would be to slow your tempo down. Also, though, a second way is just to work in small groups. So if I work with just the first group of 16th notes into the downbeat of the second. Then the second group. Put them together. Etc. like that. Um, let's jump ahead uh, to bar nine. And we have a crescendo, decrescendo, and bar 10, a decrescendo. Again, the dynamics are really, really important in this piece. So go ahead and, and make sure that you feel good about uh, what you're doing, exaggerating them a little bit so they really do come out. Um, 
effectively. Actually, let's back up into bar eight, and uh, I, did, I forgot to mention this earlier, but we do have an A in bar two. The throat A is, of course, fingered like this, but I like to also put my third finger down and my third finger here, so left hand and right hand and the low C or F key. And sometimes I also will put my whole right hand down. So it depends on the clarinet you're playing and the intonation, but it fills the note out a little bit and it also makes uh, with a fuller sound and it also enables you to play when you get in bar nine to get up to that F to already have some fingers down. Um, a lot of the clarinet playing, a lot of clarinet playing in general is about how you move your fingers and how you're coordinating that finger movement with the air, managing the, the control of the air. Those two factors really do work a lot together. Um, so in bar eight to bar nine, I'm going to take a breath. And I think what I'm going to do here in, um, in bar eight is to not put my low C F key down so that I can be prepared for that F that's coming up in bar nine. In fact, I'm finding what I'm uh, probably most comfortable with is to keep my first finger down. So I'm, I'm um, uh, getting my A to be a little fuller by putting A, three, and even this first key, but nothing else. Like that. Um, when we get into bar 10, really make use of that crescendo and so that our high F can be nice and full. And um, again, go 97%, not 100% on that F to make sure it speaks. Uh, the high, let's go over some fingerings real quick. So in bar, uh, let's go to the end of bar 10. We have our A, our high D, which is again, the thumb, the register key, two, three here, one, and the pinky. And then the F is like this. So two, three, the pinky here, which is our G sharp key, thumb and register, one, and the pinky here. If you need to use the half hole, I kind of slide off the D, slide my first finger here off the D after I get uh, my A to my D. For my particular clarinet, I'm actually making the pitch go a little bit higher by putting an extra key down, but most of the time you won't need to do that. Uh, so I would just say, play your high F with just like this fingering here. Um, the tongue, the staccato notes, uh, I just separate those in bar 11. I don't really, it, they kind of get the intensity warmed up because there are accents on the last four eighth notes. So and what I'm trying to do there is really kind of emphasize them all leading down to my low E, which is a real fortissimo note. Again, keep your sound contained and, and focused and don't let it go. Uh, you're not playing for a marching band here and you're not playing barely uh, outside. So keep the sound beautiful and full and resonant on that low E. Um, and you can probably treat those staccatos and those accents almost as a little bit of a crescendo down to that nice low E. In bar 12, uh, you'll have some triplets and you're gonna uh, play, depending on the addition you have, I'm playing the triplets. So it's tying the B flat into the triplet B flat, then two notes slurred and then one note hung. And then in bar 13, we accent the second note. All the while, we're doing a, a gradual crescendo. Um, at the end of bar 14, there's a diminuendo. And probably, we could 
would take the E, the last E of bar 14, maybe the G, and stretch it a little bit. to enable us to make that decrescendo a little bit more pronounced. Um, if you need a breath after the D in bar 15, go ahead and take one carefully without in, uh, making it too noticeable. And again, on my bar 15, E to D, when I'm playing the A, I'm putting three down and one so that I can, and actually for the G sharp, this is an excellent G sharp fingering like that. So G sharp, three and one, and then I go back up to my A and smoothly get up to my F. I would say overall, make sure you have a read that is not too, too hard on this particular piece. You want uh, it just hard enough that the high notes are gonna have some richness and some fullness and character to them, but also that you're able to play at a soft dynamic level. Um, I'm gonna make uh, some video, I'll have a video link here for you also to watch a warm-up video. Uh, I would say that go ahead and start to develop a good warm-up routine and if you don't have one already, where you play some crescendo, decrescendo, long tones on different registers, in, in different registers, um, and also along with some scales. That will help with this particular piece. I wish you all the best, and uh, please let me know if you have any questions.